Guys, so many tips in this video. It's like a well of information. There's more to a great steak than just the moment it hits your grill. So I'm gonna show you all of my favorite tips to get that juicy, tender, beautiful steak from prepping all the way to plating. Here's how it's done. First things first is to salt your steak. I say actually salt early and salt often because salt is an active ingredient, meaning it changes your food. So if you have time, uh, I would say salt your steak anywhere from an hour up to overnight to get the best tasting steak. And in fact, I actually did this last night. Let me show you. So here I have a steak that I salted last night and man, you can see the difference. This steak right here, it's darker. It's a little bit more tacky than this steak. It's really bright and it's kind of a little bit more moisture on the outside. So what's happened is that the salt that I put on this steak drew out the moisture in the steak, but then the water in there kind of mixed with the salt and it drew it back into the steak so that my steak is now seasoned all the way through. The other thing that it does is it actually dries out the exterior because I didn't cover this when I put it in the fridge. So the drier the steak is, the easier it's gonna be to get those beautiful char marks on your steak because you don't have all that water that's competing with the grill. The next thing I wanna talk about is using a probe thermometer. You know, there, there are a lot of tips about cooking a steak and making sure it's done. You, you know, hold your finger here and here, you kind of press on the steak when it's cooking. People like hit their chin and their, their cheek, all this kind of stuff. The fact is, all of those are guesses. I would rather know and be sure that my steak is cooked exactly the way I like it, right? I've spent a lot of money on these steaks. I don't wanna be leaving the, the most important part to guesswork. So I'm gonna use a probe thermometer. And there are a couple of tips for this. First, the probe itself, you're gonna read the temperature at the very tip of the probe. So I wanna make sure it's at the center of my steak. To do that, I'm gonna first find the center, like pick this side, and then put the probe right here and hold my fingers right at the edge of the steak. That way when I put the probe in, I know it's not gonna go any further into the steak and end up out the other end. Then I wanna make sure because, you know, this is a really big steak that I've got the center here, so I'll just find the center of the steak and then I'm gonna press it in just where my fingers are and make sure that, and there it is, right at the center of my steak. So I know that the thermometer probe is reading exactly where it should. So when you're using a probe thermometer, you actually wanna set your temperature to be about five degrees below your desired temperature. Because as soon as your steak comes off the grill, it's gonna to continue to heat up. That's called carryover cooking. So in this case, I might like my steak, you know, medium rare. I'm gonna set it to 130 degrees and not 135. This will make sure that the steak is exactly the way I want it once I cut into that steak. All right, so my grill is hot. And you really wanna make sure that whatever you're cooking on, a grill, a stove top, outside, inside, that you have a really nice hot grill for your steak to hit. So that way you have these beautiful grill marks that char on the outside and the steak itself can be nice and juicy and tender on the inside. This steak that I didn't salt ahead of time, I'm gonna finally salt it right now. For a steak this size, you actually wanna be fairly generous with the amount of salt that you put on there. I'd say like a half teaspoon is a good, good amount for each steak and make sure, you know, to do every single side. Now, finally, I'm ready to cook my steak. Now, I don't wanna press down on this steak so that I'm squeezing out all of the moisture in that steak. I'm just gonna let the grill touch the top and then kind of lock this plate in place. To go along with this steak, I'm gonna make a rosemary and garlic compound butter. It sounds fantastic, right? Uh, a compound butter is basically butter with another thing. In this case, rosemary and garlic, but if you have thyme or sage or one of your favorite rubs, those are all great options. Because butter is a great carrier of flavor. So all of that rosemary and the garlic is gonna be spread out onto the steak and maybe some asparagus that I cook with it later. And it's so good. I'm gonna serve this steak with grilled asparagus. And asparagus, if you don't know, has this kind of woody end on here that it never really gets tender as you cook it. So you can kind of just break them off and find out where 
the woody end is, but you don't have to do it all individually. Usually what I'll do is I'll find one or two and then I'll let that be the judge for the rest of them. So then I can kind of line it up here, keep that rubber band on there and all of my asparagus ends are all intact. So our steaks are ready. <laughs> Come on, they look amazing. No, no matter how good your steak looks coming right off of that grill, I can't stress this enough. You have to wait before you cut into it. At least five minutes. Because what's gonna happen is during that five minutes, the juices in the steak, they're all really tense right now and those juices are gonna redistribute throughout the steak. So if I cut into it immediately out of the grill, all of that work that I put into salting it ahead of time, putting it on the grill, not pressing down, making sure it's nice and hot, all of that goes to waste because all of those juices are just gonna flood onto the board and I'm gonna be left with a dry steak. So be patient. So now I'm just gonna add this asparagus. I wanna make sure it's in a nice, even single layer. Add a little bit more salt. Cook it. All right, so my asparagus is grilling, my steaks are resting. I'm gonna take some of this compound butter while they're resting, just let them bathe in some rosemary garlic compound butter. Guys, these are gonna be so good. These look fantastic. Just take the rest of my rosemary garlic butter, spread that over the asparagus. Just gonna add a spritz of lemon juice here. Really add some brightness with all that rosemary and butter in the asparagus. All right, my steak is rested. It's ready to be sliced and served. Just gonna cut some nice thick slices. And there you have it. Grilled steaks and asparagus with the rosemary garlic compound butter. It is so good. You're gonna love it.